Hey guys, Max here. So, um, this video is just something I've been, I wanted to do for a while and I'm just going to do it now. And it's just which graphics cards are the best for a CRT. So usually like what card, what graphics card is the best? It's usually just a matter of like, um, which is the like strongest, which has the best benchmarks, right? What, what's the newest graphics card pretty much? Um, but for CRTs, it's a bit different because both AMD and NVIDIA, they stopped having an analog output um, on all of the graphics cards now. And they both stopped at different times. So I'm going to go through and show you guys what which ones are the best for, um, for each. And um, it really isn't a matter of, I'll just say this right now, NVIDIA stopped uh, having an analog out way later than AMD did. AMD stopped having, having analog out really early. Um, and it isn't just a case of NVIDIA graphics card that were made later are better because they both have issues with their, um, with like setting resolutions basically. Um, and I'm gonna start off with just the basics. So you can see here the different type of connectors uh, for DVI. So basically, there are no graphics cards that are any good right now that are made with uh, VGA output. So if you're using a CRT, you're going to be using a um, DVI to VGA converter, and you're going to need to have the analog pins on it to be able to actually um, use analog out without a active converter. So this is the kind of layout that you're usually going to see is this one. It's a DVI I dual link um, and if you don't have that basically what you're going to stuck having to use is a active uh, converter and the issue with all of these is basically they're kind of limited to uh, 1920 by 1200 and if we go and look it's just it's not very high I can show you in a second but so if we go look at this right so this is a really high-end CRT um, and it does 2048 by 1536 at 86 Hertz so if we look at this in crew if we just set this resolution so 2048 by 1536 and we set it to 86 Hertz we can look at the bandwidth that's being used so we're using uh, the total pixel clock or whatever it is 393 Hertz and really like the highest CRTs go is like a little bit over 400 megahertz. Like I think my, um, my Dell P1230 goes maybe to like 410 or something like that megahertz. So yeah, it goes pretty high. Now let's look at what 1920 by 1200 is at 60 hertz. So it's half it's 193 megahertz so you're getting half of it and i've tried using a active converter before and admittedly i didn't spend a lot of time messing with the image but it just is not right and if you want to use it comfortably you're going to be using a resolution like 1024 by 768 because you want to have a high refresh rate with this crt otherwise you're going to get a headache so with that out of the way let's just look at um the graphics cards now so we can see the problem with AMD started with the R9 series, basically. So around that time. So here's a person complaining that like, okay, I just upgraded and now I can't use the VGA connectors uh, that he was able to use with his old graphics card. So this is what happened with the R9 kind of era of graphics cards. They got rid of the, um, the analog out. So this, these don't have analog out anymore. I believe these ones. Ah, I didn't mean to select all that. I don't think I can select what I want to, but basically these and then all of the newer ones don't have analog out, except for some really like inexpensive economy type of um, graphics cards. So if we go look at these, which are the ones that came out before, these have analog out, all of these basically. So this for AMD is the best and last analog out, but I'm gonna correct myself here because you know one of the things AMD did is they actually used the exact same card basically but they improved the manufacturing a bit on it 
So actually the last one that has analog out is the R9 R9, I mean Radeon R9 280X. So actually the best graphics card from AMD is this specific graphics card. And I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth, um, but uh, you can see right here the, cause this is the memory. It has a three gigabyte um, uh, of VRAM, three gigabyte frame buffer. So let's go look at the NVIDIA side of things because they stopped a lot later. So here's somebody going, okay, will the GTX 1080 still have analog out? Um, and no, it doesn't. Okay, so we can go and look here. I have that skipped ahead a bit because I'm going to go into that a bit later. But basically the last, the last graphics card that came out um, before the 10 series, so the whatever 1000 series, is the 900 series. And the best one out of those is the Titan X. Um, okay, but it isn't quite the best one, and I'm going to get into that later, but it's really unreasonable to get the actual best one. Um, but this, for the most part, for NVIDIA is going to be best. Now, I'll just quickly go on and say the difference between AMD and NVIDIA um, for setting... Uh, resolutions. So if you're using progressive, you're going to have basically the exact same experience between both AMD and NVIDIA, but the issues are going to start to come when you use interlaced. When you use interlaced resolutions, AMD is going to have a much better time. You're going to be able to do lower resolutions. It's going to be much more intuitive, um, and higher resolutions are going to work as well. And with AMD, this is the big thing you're going to be able to use interlaced resolutions in newer games. Uh, there's a thing that happened with DirectX something, I'm not sure which one it was, but basically the way they looked at like what resolutions are available from your monitor changed, and uh, with setting like custom resolutions, they won't always detect it. But with the way AMD did it, uh, it will work on newer games. One of the issues I had though with uh, with AMD interlaced resolutions were, um, there were some like, it seemed like artifacting when I was using really high resolutions. And I think there was one other issue. I forget what it is now. If I remember later, I'll bring it up, but basically it's just uh, artifacting, I think was the only real issue. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, oh, no, 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 I remember now. With uh, the AMD um, interlaced resolutions, basically, even though you should be able to go past a certain point, it would just stop. So there's like some artificial limit at, um, it was basically, I forget what it was. It was like 2,900, no, was it? I think it might be 2,560. There's like an arbitrary limit at that. So you couldn't, for like the highest resolution you could do, it'd be like 2560 by 2560. It's just like completely arbitrary, that limit. So uh, realistically, the highest resolution you do on an AMD graphics card would be 2560 by 1920. So that's the highest resolution you do on that. I don't know why I spend a lot of time trying to figure out a solution to that, but I just couldn't figure it out. So that's the limit on um, AMD. So with NVIDIA, you're going to be able to go way past this. I really didn't find a limit. Actually, I think there was. The limit was something silly anyways. I was able to go to 3,840, so that's 4K um, width, I believe, but I think there's a limit somewhere else. Either way, you're gonna be able to go to a resolution way beyond uh, what's reasonable because you're not gonna to go to this resolution just because you're not gonna be able to do any resolution or any refresh rate that's actually comfortable. Like I think the highest resolution I did was 3200 by 2400. I was playing Skyrim at that resolution at like 80 something hertz. Um, Yeah, so that's the resolution you're going to be doing. Um, oh yeah, also just to mention this right now, you're going to have more luck getting games to run at high, really high resolutions on NVIDIA if you run them windowed. Um, and with NVIDIA, it's not intuitive at all to get interlaced resolutions to work. You're going to have to do this really weird workaround that I have a video of, and I'll put it in the description to be able to get them to work. 
And in my opinion, if you want to get the most out of a CRT, you're going to really need to go into interlaced resolutions. And I'm just going to say this right now. It's like my opinion on interlaced resolutions. Um, I don't think interlaced resolutions are really useful at low resolutions, like high refresh rates at low resolutions. Like, for example, um, something that'd be cool on a CRT is to be able to do like... Um, 2048 by 1536 at 144 hertz interlaced for counter-strike but i just i've tried it and it just doesn't feel right i think it's an issue because in like some twitch shooter i don't know if you'd call a counter-strike a twitch shooter but i think it's because you're focusing just on like a single pixel maybe that um uh because it's interlaced that single pixel is really only at like 72 hertz but if you're focusing on like the whole thing as a whole, like you're playing a game like Skyrim or maybe like PUBG where you're like running around kind of looking at everything constantly. It It is 144 hertz for like all intents and purposes. It feels like 144 hertz. But for Counter-Strike, it just doesn't feel right. So I'd just keep that in mind as well. And so, yeah, now I'm going to just clarify specifically exactly which... Um, which uh, graphics cards are the best. So, I don't want help. Thanks, guy. So, this is the best AMD card because it has a 6 gigabyte frame buffer. Um, there, are, I believe, are a few other R9-280Xs that have 6 gigabytes of VRAM. And, yeah, that's basically what you're going to be looking for is a 6 gigabyte version if you want to get the best. They're very hard to find for sale. Um, you don't see them very often, so yeah. Uh, the other thing you're probably going to want to keep in mind is that uh, if you're playing newer games, the VRAM might not be that useful. You're probably going to run into like um, power issues, like you're just not going to have enough processing power, so you might want to get a few of these. They really aren't expensive. You can even get like uh, an HD 79, uh, 7970, and those also aren't very expensive. Uh, the thing you need to be careful about with a lot of these is a lot of these cards were used for Bitcoin mining, so they've been really, like, almost run into the ground. So be careful about that. Um, yeah. And then... So if we go over to the NVIDIA side of things, so it's just a Titan X. The Titan X is the best, and actually I can just look at, like Titan X's are actually getting pretty cheap. And I, I should clarify just really quickly, it isn't any Titan X. It's a Titan X Maxwell. So if we go to the 10,000 series, which is, I believe, at the top for whatever reason. So, oh wait, that's mobile. So the Titan X here is the Pascal. I don't know what that is. Anyways, the Titan X here is Pascal. It doesn't work. That is um, no analog out on that one. So, it's a normal Titan X. And the prices are actually getting pretty cheap. I think pretty soon they're going to be around like 350 bucks. So here's one with eight days left, six days left, 350. Um, if we could see one that was like closer to ending, it's probably going to be more around 500 bucks still. Kind of annoyingly, but I think once the new Titan X comes out, or whatever it's going to be called, the new Titan, they'll probably drop quite a bit more. And I would recommend, if you want to get one of these for CRT, just to look on uh, Craigslist or whatever type of local selling thing you have uh, when the new Titan uh, comes out and see if anyone's trying to get rid of their old one. Because that's what I did to get mine, basically, and I got it for very cheap um so skipping ahead if you have an absurd amount of money and for some reason want to use it with a crt this is basically the best graphics card you can get um i think you might have issues getting a clock speed as high as with just a normal titan x with one of the quadros but you are getting 24 gigabytes of vram which I'm not really certain that you'd be able to use. Although, admittedly, when I was playing Skyrim with a shit ton of mods, uh, at this resolution, I was actually like using 
a lot of VRAM. Um, I also had anti-aliasing turned on. So this probably wouldn't hurt, but like you look at the prices for these, because the only ones that, like this is a 12 gigabyte version. There's no point in getting this for, um, for trying to use it with a CRT. You want to get the 24 gigabyte version. And these are just absurdly expensive right now. But I'm just doing this because in the future, maybe these are like a hundred bucks or something and somebody wants to just get the most out of their CRT they've had forever. So yeah, this would be the one to get is a NVIDIA Quadro. Um, and I just want to recap because I can put this in better sense for AMD versus NVIDIA. And it kind of really just shows you like the whole like issue but between choosing between the two. If you're going to use interlaced resolutions, um, AMD is going to be better for newer games because you're going to be able to use the interlaced resolution in more newer games. Um, but NVIDIA is going to be better at using interlaced resolutions at older games because you're going to be able to use a higher interlaced resolution which doesn't really make any sense so you can kind of think about the whole issue in that um, and then the other issue is that you can get a newer Nvidia graphics card that has more like processing power than an AMD graphics card so if you're using progressive uh, scanning an Nvidia graphics card is going to be better than an AMD graphics card in like all demanding games basically so you can kind of have that um, food for thought I have a uh, AMD HD 7970 and I really loved using that for a lot of games um, I really didn't have many issues with that uh, playing games from like I'd say 2012 and older and there's tons and tons of games from that era like before 2012 there's thousands and thousands of good games um, and with the uh, Titan X I don't have any issues with any new games really so yeah just some things to think about and with both of these cards you can do four-way crossfire and SLI so yeah I mean, if you need more processing power, you can always do that. The other thing you can also keep in mind is that um, I didn't test this personally, but it might be worth testing. And that is um, using a newer graphics card. So let's say you get like a, um, a Titan X Pascal. Well, so you get like a Titan X Pascal and then you get an old graphics card like a... Um, I can't really think of any old ones at the top of my head that aren't too old, I guess. So you get like a NVIDIA 580 or you have like a NVIDIA 580 lying around and use the 580 as um, your PhysX card. And since most games don't have PhysX, you shouldn't run into any issues with it like slowing things down. And a lot of these, they have analog out. And I believe that you can use the analog out on um, one of these while still using a newer card that doesn't have an analog out. But I haven't tested this. This might not work. But it's something to keep in mind because it might make using a way more powerful graphics card very possible. And I believe there's also a workaround to get NVIDIA uh, PhysX cards to work with AMD. But I'm really doubtful that you'll be able to use the NVIDIA graphics card uh, for video output. But that's something to also keep in mind. So that's everything I wanted to talk about. It's, wow, that ended up being pretty long. It's like 20 minutes. Hope you guys were able to get through that um, and learned a few things. See ya.